Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video, we're going to explain how to use the pivot operator in Microsoft SQL Server. The video is all about how to create basic pivot tables in SQL Server, and we'll start with a basic explanation of what the pivot operator actually does, and how it compares to the standard group by clause in a select statement. We'll then break down how you go about building a query to generate a pivot table, starting with how to select the base data, then moving on to show you how to create a temporary data set, and then finally how to apply the pivot operator to that data set. We'll then show you a few tips and tricks with pivot tables, including how to quickly generate the column list that ordinarily you would have to manually type in. We'll show you how you can create row groups in a pivot table as well to generate sort of cross tab style queries. And finally, we'll just mention quickly how you can order the results for both the rows and the columns in a pivot table. So let's get started. Let's start with a quick look at what the pivot operator actually does. So the standard way to group data in a SQL Server query is to use the group by clause. So in this simple example, we're trying to group our data by the country name, and we're trying to display a count of the film ID. So we're going to show how many films were released in each country. If I execute the query, we'll find that the group by clause creates row groups. So for the field in the group by clause, each individual item in there creates a new row of data with the results in a separate column. But what if you want to display these country names not as row group headings, but as column group headings instead. That's what the pivot operator can do. So I switch to another example that I've created here, a simple one to, to uh, use the pivot operator. If I execute the results now, we'll see exactly the same answers, just with our data arranged by columns rather than by rows. Now, that in itself is massively useful, but if you combine the power of the pivot operator to create column groups with standard row groups, then you can create some quite interesting results. So if I switch to one more example and then execute that, we'll see this time we've got, as well as our column groups, we've also got row groups based on the film's year. So we've effectively created what's referred to in Microsoft Access as a cross-tab query, or in Microsoft Excel as a pivot table. Though it's not very dynamic, it's a fairly static pivot table, but nonetheless we've got a combination of row groups and column groups. So the rest of the video is going to explain how we go about building this sort of query. The first step in using the pivot operator is to select the absolute base data that the pivot table will be based on. So for our example, we want to group by the country name and count the film IDs. So we need to write a simple select statement that will select the, the country name and the film ID. So let's do that in a new query window. I'm going to select from, and the first table will be TBL country, and I'm going to give that a quick alias as C, and apply an inner join to TBL film as F. The two fields that join those tables together are on C.countryID, equal to f dot film country id. So that's fairly standard join code. In the select list then, I can choose country name, and the second column will be film id in this case. I'm just going to count how many there are. Your aggregates though can be based on anything, so you're, you're, you're welcome to use the sum, average, min, max functions, etc. So you might want to choose something like film box office dollars or budget dollars if you wanted slightly more interesting statistics. We're going to stick with a basic count though of the film id. So there's our base query, which returns the basic data, a quick execute to make sure that it returns the correct results, and that all looks sensible. Now ideally for the next step, I could just apply my pivot operator directly to the results of this select statement, but unfortunately I can't do that. In order for the pivot operator to work, we have to create some kind of table valued expression that we can apply the pivot operator to. So we have a variety of choices here. We could use derived tables, or common table expressions, CTEs, or we could even create temporary tables. For this video, we're going to use a quick and simple derived table. So to do that with our basic select statement, what we're going to do is, first of all, wrap up the select statement in a set of parentheses, and then we're going to apply an alias to this. So we're going to call this derived table as base data. And then we simply need to say, for our purposes, we want to select everything from this derived table. So we do that above the derived table. I'm going to say select star from all the results of this derived table. Now that we've prepared our base data, we can go about applying the pivot operator to it. 
So I'm going to do that on the next line. I'm going to write the word pivot and then open a set of parentheses and a few lines later on I'm going to close the parentheses and then give this pivot table an alias. I'm going to call mine inventively as pivot table. What we then need to do within the pivot operator itself is specify a couple of different pieces of information. And the first one's nice and easy. We need to specify which field we're applying an aggregate to. So for us, we're, we're applying the count aggregate function to the film ID column. So that's nice and simple and straightforward. On the next line, we then have to say which column from the base data we're pivoting our data on. So which one we want to become the column headings. So for us, we say that by saying for country name. Now the next bit is the most irritating of the whole process. We have to then list for the country name column which values from the country name column we want to become the column headings in our pivot table. And we do that using the in operator. I'm going to start this on the next line. We say in and then in a set of parentheses we have to list out in a comma separated list in a set of square brackets for each column name the values that we want to become the individual column headings. And yes, it really is, to begin with, this tedious. You explicitly write out every single one, supposedly by hand. But that's a bit rubbish, so we're not going to do ours that way. What we're going to do is cheat ever so slightly by writing a simple little query that returns the comma-separated list of country names that we can then just copy and paste into our pivot operator. To do this, let's start with a new query window, and in here I'm simply going to say select, or we'll spell select properly first, that would help, select from TBL country, and I'm simply going to select the country name. If I execute that with the F5 key, that gives me a list of all the individual countries. Now the next job is to wrap these up in a set of square brackets, and we can do that with a simple bit of concatenation. And in fact, I'll add in the, the comma separator between each country name as well. So at the front of the country name column, I'm going to open a set of single quotes, followed by a comma and an open square bracket, and then close the single quote and add that to the country name. At the end, I can then add on the close square bracket in a, in a pair of single quotes, and if I execute that, we end up with a list of country names stored in square brackets with a comma in front of each one. Now that's a fairly quick and simple way to do this. It's worthwhile mentioning at this point that there is also actually a dedicated SQL Server function for performing this role as well. There's a function called quote name. So rather than concatenating these characters specifically, what we can do is actually pass the country name column into the quote name function. So technically there are two parameters, we're only going to specify the very first one. So by default, if we pass in the country name column into the quote name function, that returns the individual values stored in square brackets. Just out of interest, the second parameter of the quote name function allows you to specify which character you want to use to store the um, to store the, um, the country name in. So if I put in a pair of round brackets, it, it shows me the country names stored in a set of round brackets. If I wanted the country names to be quoted in single quotes, I can put in a pair of single quotes and it will quote the country names in single quotes instead. But of course for us, we definitely want the square brackets. So let me take away the second parameter there. Then all I need to do is tag on the, um, the comma in front of the country name. So let me tag that on again. I'll have a comma plus the result of the quote name function and that gives us roughly what we're going to put into our pivot operator. So all I need to do now is select the results of the query and then copy them and quick right click and copy or control and C and then head back to the other script where our pivot operator sits and I'm going to delete first of all the ones that I started typing in. There's no point having those in there twice. So let's get rid of those. So I've got the in operator and the open and close parentheses. All I need to do now is paste, so control and V or right click and paste. I need to take away the leading comma for the very first column, so let me just delete that. And just to tidy up a little bit, I'm going to indent these columns. I'm going to select these uh, lines of text and press the tab key a couple of times to indent them. And that is the quickest and simplest way to generate your list of column headings. So now that we've done all this, we can just execute the entire thing and hopefully see the results of our basic pivot table. So there we go. We've got the individual country names listed out 
those column headings with the same count of the film IDs as we would have had we used the basic group by clause. In the examples I showed you at the start of the video, I mentioned that it was possible to include row groups as well as the column groups in a pivot. And the good news about this is that it's remarkably simple to do. We don't need to modify anything about the pivot operator at all. All we need to do, if we want to create a row group, is include an extra column in the select list of our base data. So, as well as having the country name and the film ID, I'm going to include the, uh, a simple calculation to calculate the year that the film was released in. So I can do that using the year function, and I can say year film release date, and I'll give, I'll give this an alias as well, I'll call it as film year. I don't need to change anything else at all now. Having included that extra column in the select list of the base data, when the pivot operator works, because we haven't specified otherwise, we've specified that the aggregate is the film ID and the column headings will be from the country name, any other column that's from the select list in the base data will automatically form row groups in the pivot table. So if I simply execute the query now, I'll see that I get a column full of um, film years. I can also order the results of my query just in the same way that we traditionally would. So if, for example, I'd rather see the film year um, sorted in reverse order, then let me just remove the results panel by pressing Ctrl and R. I can add an order by clause to the end of the entire select statement, so I can say order by film year in descending order. If I execute the query again now, we'll see the later years appear at the top of the list. Sorting the column headings is trivial. It's just listed in the order that you've listed the column headings in your pivot operator. So if I wanted Germany and Russia to appear alphabetically, then all I would need to do is move these two country names to the appropriate place in the list. So that's Germany moved, and also let's move Russia, and execute the query again, and we'll see the column headings now come out in the order that we've listed them this time. It's also possible to create multiple row groups in your pivot table simply by including more columns in the original select list. So if we head back to the base data query again, the select country name, year, of film release date and film ID, let's say I also wanted to group my results by the month of release in a particular year. So if I added in another column, um, I want to show the name of the month rather than just the month's number. So I'm going to use the date name function here to calculate the month of the film release date. There we go. And I'll give this an alias as film month. Once again, having simply included that column in the underlying base data, if I execute the query, I'll find that I generate a new column called film month, where the data is now separated. In this case, for each year, I've got the, uh, the data broken down by month as well. It's sorted alph alphanumerically, of course, um, because I've generated text. It's sorted alphabetically, which is why the months don't appear in chronological order. But you can see that for each year, I get a separate row for each month in which films were released. So apart from the actual basics of creating the pivots operator itself, and of course by far and away the most annoying part is generating this list of column names. Once you've generated the pivot, it's relatively easy to tweak and add in extra row groups, change the sort order, and do all the standard things you'd expect to do in a simple query. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.